Live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE. Covering Open Source Summit North America 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Hey, welcome back everyone. Live here in Los Angeles, this Cube's live coverage of Open Source Summit North America. I'm John Furrier, as part of the Linux Foundation here with Stu Miniman, co-host and Alison Wikibom. Our next guest is Matt Mycini, who's the Technical Product Marketing for Linux Containers at Red Hat. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming here. on, appreciate it. Red Hat has been, again, the gold standard when it comes to open source. This conference really is about Linux. <laughs> so you can't, you can't go any further than look at the shining example of success that is Red Hat. From when I was growing up back in the day when open source was radical, mm -hmm. tier two, tier three, some would argue, uh, alternative to the big boys who were the proprietary operating systems, now tier one, well documented, no need to recycle all, all that. But the fact is, RHEL is a tier one, supports multiple seven, 10, what, how many years now is this support RHEL? Is it over 12? I think. Uh, yeah, over 15 years of Red Hat Enterprise Linux at this point. Oh yeah, come on right? John, remember when Red Hat Advanced Server came out in what was that, 2000, 2001? 2002? Turned into you know, RHEL eventually. But it, yeah, I, I, John, I was working for you know, an infrastructure company mm -hmm. and keeping up with kernel.org was a total nightmare right. and it needed some adult supervision and that's what Red Hat brought. Yeah, of course too, and this is well known. Every bank, this is tier one, it's part of the operational infrastructure, so it's got to be stable. But now you got all this growth going on, certainly we heard uh, Zemlin talking about it on stage, stage, the executive director saying, look it, we're going to have potentially by 2026, 400 million libraries right. in open source. So certainly the open source um, realm is growing. Sure. Operating system still has got to power all this application. Absolutely. <laughs> and so you want the best of both worlds. You want the stability, foundational aspect of the operating system while still encouraging experimentation, failure, growth, iteration. Mm -hmm. So agile and DevOps ethos is about open source. It is about trying it. Same time, you got to keep the lights on. They want, <laughs> want downtime. What's your reaction? How do you guys look at that going forward? You want to enable more, but you don't want to break stuff. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really, kind of one of the hearts of most of our customers' problems, right, is if you put it in terms of, of spend, 75, 80% of what people spend money on in IT right now is keeping the lights on. And that's really long-term not sustainable, right, for anybody involved. Um, so one of the things that, that we need to do uh, as an operating system and as a, broader than just an operating system, as a, as a distribution where customers come to us and, and not want just OS bits, but they also want tooling and, and application components. You know, how do we draw that line between things that move a little bit faster and upstream that, that are popular and people want and need access to, at the same time providing that really long-term stable system user space that really shouldn't change over, uh, over a long period of time because that's what provides that, that sort of application stability that we can ride out over, over a long yeah. period of time. Matt, in the keynote this morning, Jim gave, put out a lot of stats talking mm -hmm. about 10,000 lines of code outed daily, 2,500 lines of code removed daily, you know, 450 organizations contributing, uh, you know, so much going on in the space. What are they working on? You know, what are some of the big <laughs> you know, issues because it's stability, we've added growth. Sure. You know, sure there's cool things like Kubernetes and containers. Uh, I remember the, the hot t-shirt at the Red Hat Summit this year was, you know, Linux is containers, right. containers are Linux. Uh, so you know, we know a little bit about that story. So what sort of things is the community working on these days? Sure, so like you said, you know, uh, a lot of shiny objects, right? And even those objects, to be honest, they're not that shiny, right? You look at some of the, the, the original support for what's now Linux containers, I'm talking 2006, if you really want to draw the line, 2002. Um, but there's a lot of things going on in uh, new hardware enablement, right? It's not just new applications that are taking advantage of these uh, different kinds of technologies. We've got new vendors coming out, ARM is about set to take off and, and, and add some new cha challenges and choices to the enterprise customers. Um, we've got a lot of folks who are working in uh, networking, right? The networking stack within RHEL has changed dramatically over the past 10 years, right? And with OpenStack and, and things that are driving through DPDK and into uh, uh, virtual functions and things along those lines, yeah. th there's a lot of uh, core stability and core change and things that we've, we think of as stable over yeah. time. 
Matt, bring us in some of those some of those new workloads. Uh, we spent sure. a lot of time this last year hearing about you know edge computing, IoT, uh, you know, you know be, being something that, that that's uh, pretty important going mm -hmm. forward. Uh, you know, Linux looks like it's going to be <laughs> a lot of these places. Mobile, you know, it's already all there. Um, you know, we talked uh, this morning. You know, 2017's the year of Linux desktop, just because <laughs> there's so many devices right. now that are Linux. So you know, how how, do, how does the workload impact that? Yeah. So. Uh, you know, everything these days is, is really starting to get to the point where almost everything's a distributed workload, right? We're, we've really left the, definitely left the single system, single workload paradigm, and even the kind of traditional up through the past few years, end tier, we have app, web, and, uh, and database. That's really starting to get pushed out all across multiple devices. Uh, not only is it getting compute closer to the edge, with some of the IoT devices, but simply looking at how we do reliability, stability, you mentioned DevOps, that whole, uh, the ability to, to, to move that reliability layer away from relying on expensive components in hardware, or expensive components in software, and really distribute that layer of knowledge at the application and use more replaceable, more commodity sorts of uh, Man, I'd like to get thoughts on the operations as well as my degree and my undergraduate in computer science, and. Back in the 80s, everything was you had to build your own operating systems. Mm -hmm. Again, this is where systems come back. Sure. If you look at the cloud today, it's really a systems game. And all of, the, all of us guys and gals from the old days are now in, in vogue again because mm -hmm. the cloud is an operating system. Now you got subsystems, you got, maybe it's just distributed a little bit more decentralized, but again, again, it's the same game, different era, if you will. So you're starting to see the emphasis on operating systems. So the question is, you know, Intel, is a great example, Paul Marich used to call Intel the hardened top, where a lot mm -hmm. of proprietary stuff underneath that process that no one really cares about, because it just sure. runs. I'm not saying that open source is proprietary, but at some point you have to harden the top. Right. And you guys have that with RHEL, right? So, okay, now you want to create more subsystems or new apps. Mm -hmm. How do you guys look at the future? Because it's a really dynamic environment, so DevOps is move fast and break stuff. It used to be the Facebook model, now it's move fast and be reliable which is now the ethos of ops guys. Sure. They want innovation, infrastructure is code, but they don't want it to break things. Mm -hmm. So you got to harden things. Right. At the same time, you want to don't foreclose any opportunities. Absolutely. How do you guys look at that opportunity technically? What should customers look at as a, as a navigation map to, to go down that journey path? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the most obvious way that we experiment in the open is with Fedora, right? That, that's where we, start to play around with new technologies and some of these new concepts and figure out, you know, what is the appetite and how do we stabilize those and what's the maturity level of the code. Um, but one of the other things that we do is, you know, uh, sometimes we get some flack for it, but, uh, you know, we've got this idea of backporting, right? So, uh, for example, uh, RHEL 7.4 just released about 30 days ago. Um, it's a 3.10 based kernel, that's kind of old. Except for the fact that we've added stuff that was in 4.12 and 4.8. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at not only how do we experiment upstream, how do we make sure that we're working in the right communities uh, to make to, to, to understand what that innovation looks like, how we're going to bring that in, and then bring it into Fedora, actually start to get some people using it. And once we actually see, realize that it's, you know, it's time to go ahead and stabilize this, we'll put some customer What gets your attention from an appetite standpoint? When do you guys start going, okay, we got to start really getting serious about this. Oh, there's always going to be applied R&D going there, and make things happen, but at what point do you say, okay, we got to start getting down and dirty sure. on some of these new trends, and what specifically do you look at today and saying, okay, this is obviously on our radar, we're doubling down on? Yeah, for us really, it's, it comes down to our customers, right? They're the ones that we're really trying to drive. When people start asking us, hey, we need to see some of these new features coming out, um, you know, there's a, there's kind of a critical mass that we can we can see through the market. We can see through some of our partnerships. Uh, and for example, you know, we just added some NVMe over fabric enablement. That's brand new. There's not a lot of people out there that actually have devices available, let alone put them into production at this point in time. But we need to make sure for our customers that that ecosystem is stable, from from a partner standpoint from an operating system standpoint, from a driver and device standpoint. So that way it's safe for customers to actually go ahead and use. And VME or Fabric, that would be probably service providers looking at that heavily, or is it enterprises? We've got, a, we've got actually a, a enterprises, we've got, customer, uh, we've got uh, customer enterprises, and we've actually got some partners as well. 
Linus made a comment in the keynote this morning. He said the concept of absolute security does not exist. Sure. There will be bugs. Can you speak to you know, the, the development of Linux and kind of the, the communities, you know, how do they look at security in there? Are you, you know, keeping up with those changes, making sure that you can move fast, yet be stable, uh, and, and, and handle those issues. How, how do we look at that from a Linux standpoint? Yeah, that, that's a really big challenge, and I think that uh, you know, one of the key things that happens from a community standpoint is we do have leadership that understands that community, uh, that culture of security has to be break, baked in from the start. It's not something you can bolt on once the product has been released into the wild and someone else can fix that later. Um, the community does a really good job of understanding that this has to be reviewed from the get-go. Um, and there's a lot of things that, that we do as well that you know, from working within the communities, trying to understand what, uh, what really the threat levels are and, and what happens when a new threat comes down the pike. How do we close that gap faster? How do we react to it in a timely fashion? But also at the same time, you know, preserving all the things we need to do the right way upstream. Okay, what sort of things is Red Hat working on in RHEL? Uh, what can we can share a little bit for, for the roadmap that your users are asking for that they're going to find interesting in the near future? So some of the things that we're finding uh, that, that folks are asking for kind of goes back to the, the nature of distribution these days. Um, people are asking for things that are a little more streamlined, a little more choice in, in what they can and can't use, uh, and also looking for the operating system itself to be a little more uh, automatable, to make up a word. Uh, you know, we've got that this level of, of DevOps and, and automation that's going on, both for the kind of new CI, CD systems as well as traditional fleets of virtual machines. So we're trying to work on uh, how does the operating system act as a good citizen in a highly automated environment? Uh, and can we put facilities into the operating system that help folks who are trying to automate do that sort of natively rather than you know, having the operations, operating system fight it when it, it tries what to What areas of automation do you see as hot right now? Because you know, that's a good thing. I'm a, a big fan of automation because mm -hmm. yeah, maybe some manual labor will be automated away, but those are usually non-differentiated labor roles, right. which can be shifted to higher value opportunities. I'm sure you'd agree with that, but so what would the, uh, or do you agree, and then what would be the areas that are being automated away no, in I, terms of order of operations now? Sure, yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, I, my background is, is infrastructure and, you know, I had many, many failed attempts way back in the CVS and Canary servers to try to do these things in CF Engine in 2000 and I don't really want to admit how old. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, you look at the DevOps world, right? The dev side of the house has a pretty good idea of how to automate and how to build pipelines. I think that the operations side, we're kind of missing that, that pipeline view of infrastructure as code, right? We've got the, the state machine at the beginning, kind of the state machine at the end, uh, but I would think where there's some interesting opportunities uh, to get some new expertise is that, how do I design and let an automated system create some sort of deployable artifact, either by directly creating and pushing an image somewhere or some sort of other artifact that describes a higher order than just, I need to configure these seven things and put an IP address on this box. Holistic, holistic view of things. Exactly. You got to have a good big sense of the trees, not the, the forest, not the trees. Exactly, and it <laughs> kind of goes back to that everything's a distributed system, right? Yeah. We, we no longer have, oh, this is my web server. It's like, this is web server 77 of 82 that's part of yeah. this 200 node cluster that does whatever my line of business application well, that's is. That's the cloud operations. Matt, I'll give you the final word. Give a perspective for the folks watching. Uh, what are the cool things that you guys are bringing to the market in the future? What can they expect from you guys? Obviously the operating system's critical component we heard from the keynote today is powering mm -hmm. a telescope in the uh, in Arctic. So, I mean, it's everywhere. It's done not, in, not only on Earth, but in space. Absolutely. <laughs> so, what's next? What's the exciting new things that people can expect? It's a different edge, right? There, yeah. John. What? You know, the different edge there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Going out to yeah. space. I mean, exactly. It's, it's, it's SpaceX. You got the telescope. It's an IoT device, technically. <laughs> the rover uh, has a you know Linux on board too. Uh, it, it, it's literally on other planets at this point in time. Um, can we do better than, than Linux on other planets? That, that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brings a whole other vision of pirate using the quote in the Martian movie. <laughs> exactly. You know, space pirate. Yeah. Um, so I think you know. 
part of what we're going to be seeing from, from the operating system um, is how do we drive choice and how do we provide uh, sort of a, a new way of looking at, at the way we distribute bits and pieces so that folks have more control over what they need when they need it. Like we've seen sort of an uptick in how many versions of operating systems, like we're back in that resurgence like we had in the early 2000s at LinuxCon 99, say, of different operating systems of different sizes to do slightly different things. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot more um, shape around what some of that looks like. Uh, hopefully we'll see kind of that robot army of, of Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems that, that we can, you know, make that nicely yeah. differentiated space out of. And I think that, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot more in, in uh, some of the networking space and that, that's going to And orchestration, your view on orchestration? Um, yes, orchestrate. Uh, personally, I, you know, I think it's, it, it's, it's one of those right tool for the right job. I hate to say it depends, because that's that phrase that everyone hates to hear, even though it's true. usually true. <laughs> um, and it comes down to, like you mentioned containers, like what are we trying to orchestrate and what's the light? the right layer of abstraction. Right? If we're trying to orchestrate applications, that's a different set of orchestration than perhaps trying to stand up and tear down data centers. Uh, but maybe not, and I think that from an operating system standpoint, those are all things that we can and should be able to enable, yeah. rather than you know, resisting and causing friction for people who want to say, you know, we want Kubernetes, no, we want something else, great. We're there to support all of those things because those are capabilities that we provide. Native. Matt Mycini inside theCUBE. Your Twitter handle is at Cleverbeard. Yes, uh, you can see the clever beard there. He's a technical product person, Linux and containers for Red Hat. Thanks for sharing your insight on theCUBE. Thanks really for having We appreciate me. the support from Red Hat and continued congratulations on the success of open source. You guys are the lead of the bellwether in open source and congratulations to you and your company, appreciate Cheers. it. Thanks. It's the live coverage with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman here in Los Angeles for exclusive coverage of the Linux Foundation Open Source Summit North America. We'll be right back with more live coverage, day one of two days of coverage after this short break.